Welcome to the Beaver Playbook, your home for a deep dive into all things Buena Vista University athletics. Today's show features our spring sports, including the inaugural season of BVU's newest sport, Stunt. We also sit down with Stunt coach Malinsky and Bailey Houston. Not to mention we rank the top sports uniforms here on campus. All that and lots more coming up on the Beaver Playbook right after this. Oh, hey, Jaden. How's it going, Steven? Oh, it's going pretty good. I'm just really hungry and really want to get to Law Wise for lunch. But between all these recaps and other paperwork I have to do, I just don't know if I'm going to have time for it. You usually get a steak burrito with everything, right? Um, yeah. Thanks. One day, Buddy was watching his favorite show. The show was so full of life, until it was suddenly canceled forever. Unfortunately, this will be our final episode. Buddy was heartbroken. If only there was something he could do. Wait, he and his teammates at BVTV could bring the show back. With a bit of creativity, Buddy returned his favorite show to TV for himself and everyone else to enjoy. BVTV, by Beavers, for Beavers. Sure, it's been great having Buford around the office to help everyone out. Granted, there have been some minor issues. Like I said, he's been a great help. Welcome back to the Beaver Playbook. I'm Austin West, and I'm joined by physical education extraordinaire Brandon Patton. How are we doing today? I am doing good. How are you doing, Austin? No, can't complain, can't complain when you're back on the Beaver Playbook. And let's jump right into it, shall we? First up is softball. Softball, uh, over spring break, we talked about it last episode. We thought maybe they might figure some things out over spring break. Unfortunately, unable to do that, went 2-8 and eight over their trip to California, I believe it was. They went to California baseball to Florida. And now they currently sit at 4-14, four and 14, but they haven't played a single American Rivers Conference game yet. That's the weirdest thing to me. Yeah, you know, we talked about them last time, how we, we want to see them, you know, pick it up, show a little bit more success. Obviously, you know, they're still a long season. Like you said, they have not played a conference game yet. So hopefully we can turn it around then and get a couple wins. And that's, yeah, that's one of the things. The conference game, their first one is Friday, April 7th, so it's coming up around the corner. It's just really, really crazy that they haven't played one yet, but we've had some weird weather here. In Iowa, we know for a fact Iowa weather is always always weird in the spring. We can't help it. Um, but it's been kind of weird to watch throughout the games that they're really still trying to find that consistency as when you look at their batting lineup, they only have seven set-it-and-forget-it people in that starting lineup, and it's Jamie Wentz, Natalie Murillo, Paige Druskis, Amanda Frankie, Riley Kane, Madeline Elwood, and Danica Workman. Those seven are the only ones that have played consistently in the top seven in their batting lineup. Otherwise, they've been mixed in with Alyssa Cathcart, Emma LaFave, and Nicole Griggs. And so it was weird to me that you have this inconsistency. You're 18 games in, and you still haven't found that sweet spot. You know, how do you kind of go from that? Well, hopefully, like we said, as when conference game comes, more People step up, we'll have more people off the bench, younger players, you know, they get acclimated with the team, you know, get comfortable, and hopefully the bats start going and we win. Yeah, and we just got to find that consistency in the lineup. Um, Jamie Went right now, our leading batter, 327 batting average. Again, that's the best on the team. And really just kind of struggling to find those, who are going to be fill those two spots consistently. Are we going to have, uh, whether it's injuries, whether it's just somebody's not playing well on a certain day, whatever it may be. Uh, these other three girls, Alyssa, Emma, and Nicole, they've started about eight games each, so it's been pretty similar. Uh, played in a little couple. It's been more Alyssa and Emma uh, than Nicole in a couple of games, actually getting some playing time, whether it's late or whatnot. But, again, they're all pretty even, so it's going to be interesting to see how these three work out uh, through the rest of the season. And a big thing for them has been pitching so far. I, mm -hmm. We talked about it. Uh, earlier today before we got on the show that yep. all the pitchers are allowing over four earned runs on average uh, through nine innings, which isn't great when we're not being able to put up runs ourselves. Yeah, th that's the thing with baseball and softball. You know, you're pitching, you're good, you're not allowing runs, but you also need to be able to score runs. So, 
it's almost like basketball, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's basketball season, championship games going on. Uh, baseball and softball can be can be a game of runs, and not in the in the literal <laughs> sense, and both uh, in the obvious way. But again, something to look out for is try to get that offense going with that batting order. Uh, the home opener for softball is Tuesday, April 11th. They're coming up on their first home game, and then the conference tournament is coming up soon, just a little over a month away. That'll be May 12th. To look farther farther into the future, and now on to the other diamond as we talk about the baseball team. And you predicted this in the last episode that they would get a sweep over spring ba break. Unfortunately, they fall short. They went four and three, so it's a positive. It's over 500, uh, but not the sweep you were looking for. Yeah, we mentioned how you know we we had a lot of confidence going in that we'd take it to the teams of Florida. But you know we can't complain about what we did. And yeah, exactly. And especially when right now the team is currently 15 and five, mm -hmm. six and one in the American Rivers Conference. Just picked up their first loss in the conference. Yesterday on Sunday, uh, that one was a close one as well with Loris College, and we know Loris has been one of those bigger baseball teams. Yeah. They play the University of Iowa every year. We've talked we talked about that last show as well. Uh, so an interesting match for them getting two out of the three over the weekend. Yeah, and what was the score like, seventeen to fifteen on that yes. game? So I mean, it was it could have gone either way. High scoring runs uh, mm -hmm. is one of the things that we've seen so far from the BVU baseball team, as currently they have twelve games scoring eight runs or more. Twelve. They've played. A current of 20 so far. Again, two of those are losses still, so that means sometimes they're giving up a lot of runs, uh, but it's interesting to see. Three players have three home runs, Calvin Harris, Caden Matheson, and Joel Garcia, so we're getting bat on ball, so we're very happy to see that. But nothing more you can say really about baseball. They've been very, very successful yep. so far. And as we expected from them, they sh we said they would be successful, and they, they're showing it. Yep, baseball home opener tomorrow, April 4th. Conference tournament is May 11th, just a day before softball. And so before we get back into our headlines, it's time for Guess the Player. Today's mystery player is a former women's golfer from Burbank, California. This golfer during her sophomore season in 2018-2019 was the only golfer with a top five finish that season. She would be second on the team in average strokes per course with an average of 85.2 strokes. And that season, she would just miss her second all-conference honor as she would tie for 13th place. Be Pat, I don't know if you know any golfers. You got any guesses on this one? I was trying to like pinpoint it. I was like thinking of people from California. I was like, do I know any golfers from California? But no, I was stuck, and we don't have my little picture that I usually have. Yeah, you usually get to see the picture. We yeah. hid it a little from you this time. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, I'm no golfer. This all sounds a lot better than I could do. Obviously, they're playing mm -hmm. golf in college. I'm a horrible golfer, yep. horrible, horrible golfer. And for those that are trying to figure it out still, that's all the time I got. Time's up. Today's mystery player is Raylan Arnold. Arnold was a women go woman's golfer for three seasons from 2017 to 2019 and earned herself two all-conference honors. Again, like we said, she missed it her sophomore yep. season. Don't worry. If you didn't get the player this time, there will be more opportunities to guess the player in the future. Time to continue on with our headlines. And our fall sports are getting their spring practices in. And that means football, men's soccer, they're having their practices under new coaches. You, as our trusty equipment manager, Brandon, get to spend time with the football team online. What have you seen kind of going on in those practices so far? Um, so far, you know, we're a couple weeks into practice. Guys are getting acclimated with the new coaches. They're learning the new playbooks. You know, it's just getting familiar with everything and getting better. What are kind of the emotions going on during practice again? Spring ball, it's a weird time. It's like, oh, I'm out of season, and yeah. now you got a new coach, new plays. You're going to learn everything new. Uh, what have you kind of seen at practice? Are motions high, low? What are you seeing? The guys are ecstatic. You know, they, they like what they're seeing from the new coaches so far. They like the plays that they're running. They like the energy that they bring each and every day. You know, we have 6 a.m. practices Monday and Friday, so they always have to bring the energy to that, and I'm looking forward to the season. Yeah, I know 6 a.m. practices are always <laughs> so much fun. Total blast to get up that early. Um, but I'm sure men's soccer is the same way. They're under yep. their new coach. I'm sure they're very ecstatic about that as well. But women's soccer and volleyball also having their practices as well. They're under the same coaching staff, so they get to run the same things they yep. have been. And a lot of stuff to build on for them. Uh, women's soccer, a little less than ideal last season. Volleyball had a great season last year, but again, they're losing a lot of seniors, key seniors as yep. well uh, from that team to come back to next year. Um, so that's going to be something they're going to have to get acclimated with as we go through uh, spring practices, which I'm sure they're 
obviously going to try to figure out as we go. Um, again, those seniors are going to be a real – This is spring ball is really the time where – those seniors are gone, yeah. and it's not like high school. We're like, oh, seniors are gone. We don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. until next season. Come that camp right before college is nice. You get that spring ball period. Mm -hmm. It's like two, three weeks usually, I think. Um, and it's like, okay, now we know what we're going to look like. We know what we have to build on over the summer. Whether it's we need to get in the weight room, we need to study playbooks, we just need to work on our skills, whatever it might be. Um, spring ball is a great thing for that, and that's one of the perks of being yeah. a college athlete. I think for sure for a lot of people. Um, and it's just more time spent with the yeah. team. And it especially helps with like new coaches getting to know their team, getting the, their team to know their playbooks say f for football, stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, ex exactly. New coaches, mm -hmm. they don't have to come in, all right, we got two weeks till our first game and I've never met any of you before, uh, so yeah. let's, let's try to install new plays. And it, it, <laughs> it never would go well if that was the case. Uh, so thankfully, thankfully we have spring practices uh, and we wish good luck to all of our fall sports as we get ready for that fall season. Unfortunately, I'll be gone. You'll still be here. Yes. Uh, I gotta do the old walk the stage and get the cap and gown. But that's that's besides the point. Um, but anyways, we'll move on. Last but not least, our brand new stunt team has kicked off their inaugural season, and you know this was kind of a thing. It just I think we just added it right before we came back this fall. It was kind of a new thing. We're one of eight teams in the country for Division Three for stunt. So. And we're the only one in Iowa, so we've mm -hmm. already got our uh, foot on the pedal in terms of being up on the conference in the way we've been going so far. Yeah, it's cool to see new sports like this come to BVs. We see other things like you know trap shooting. That's another example of a sport that we just saw introduced to our campus, and yeah, we're excited. Yeah, I mean, can't go wrong. I mean, we've added a lot of new sports. So mm -hmm. Trap shooting, archery, e -sports stunt is relatively now. Esports is relatively new as well. What, that was brand new our, so our sophomore year? Something like, yeah. Something like that, yeah. So, yeah, that's brand new to us as well. So it's always interesting to see that as well. Uh, right now, stunt season is technically over yeah. regular season-wise. Uh, they went 4-7 and seven in games, um, which, again, we'll talk with Coach Molinsky more about how games and points work um, because this was all new to me. We started seeing the post and we're like, oh, they scored these like points because yeah. they would go and they would win 9-5 to five and – they scored nine points in this game. And they're, they're actually called games, which was very surprising to me. Um, but either way, they went 4-7 and seven this season, and now they're hoping for a bid to Nationals, uh, which is April 26th down in Texas. So we're really hoping that they will be able to make it down to that. Um, it'll be really great to have a brand-new sport, again, one of eight in the country, uh, to go compete against the other D3 teams. So we would really love to see uh, them go down there. But since we are talking about stunt, and we always have great interviews on the Beaver Playbook, we decided to sit down with Coach Malinsky for the inaugural season, as well as one of the athletes, Bailey Houston, a senior for stunt, to talk more about competition this season and the future of stunt here at Buena Vista University. Well, Coach Malinsky, thanks for being here today for the interview. Thank you so much for having us, and or me. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be yeah. us, but a little problem came up, but it's okay. It's all good. Um, but obviously, it's the inaugural season of Stunt here at BVU. So for those of us that don't know how Stunt works, can you kind of give us the basic rundown of how scoring, games, stuff like that works? Absolutely. So Stunt takes all of the athletic um, portions of cheerleading, the acrobatics, and all of the tumbling elements from gymnastics and puts it into a four-quarter game format where you're playing another team head-to-head -head doing the exact same choreography. So um, a coach that has possession will choose which round the team is going to perform and both teams go out and perform and then whoever performs it the best with the least amount of um, mistakes or errors wins that point and then it goes to the next round. So that's that in a nutshell. Um, but basically all the fun parts of, of cheerleading and gymnastics. So I've seen some like really high scoring games, almost like 16 points, but then there are some that are like five points. How do those kind of differences occur? So if you are a strategic coach, you're going to plan, if you're playing against a D1 or Division II or somebody higher than you, you're going to plan a way to keep the score low by calling rounds that you know your opponent won't have and that they won't get the point on. Um, that was our biggest strategy since all of the teams we play except for one were higher division than us. So we wanted to keep that score low, knowing that that would go into our final rankings when we're playing those higher teams. We may not get the win, but we're not going to allow them to score those high points. So we would call rounds um, and make them go out and do the rounds. We would forfeit, forfeit the rounds, and they would get too many mistakes to earn the point when they were out there by themselves. 
Okay, so there's really a lot of strategy involved, not just ab obviously the athletic ability of, of the girls on the team. Right. It's a lot of strategy on your part as well. Absolutely, and we would always talk about our game plan after watching um, game film from our, our opponents to know what they had, what they didn't have, and what rounds we would be calling and when we would be calling them um, to really make those teams go out there and, and not get as many points as they were hoping to. Gosh, the more we talk about it, <laughs> if people are like just tuning in halfway through, you think we're talking about almost like a football game Absolutely. at this point. Four quarters, we got game plan, we got to watch film afterwards, right. and we got to set it up. So there, it's interesting to see how much strategy is actually involved in this. And you mentioned going up against D1, D2 schools, as BV is the only D3 school in Iowa right. with it. One of eight, I believe, in the country of D3 at Stunt. Yeah. So how has that kind of affected all your competitions and what it's been for the getting the team together? Well, not only are we the only D3 team in Iowa, we're the only team in Iowa right now that's competing in Stunt. Um, our administration was instrumental in wanting to be the first. It's been growing from um, the West Coast, the East Coast inward. It's huge in Texas. It's huge in Missouri. So... Um, it has been a challenge to be the only D3 team and, and uh, you know, you're always having to play against these teams that have been in the stunt game for a while um, that have bigger programs. So um, it's definitely been a challenge, but we're, we're uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just, my brain is going other places. Um, but we've taken that into account in each of our week's game plan. And yeah, like you said, again, a lot bigger schools and you said, your mind is everywhere so far today because obviously just today it came out that you guys qualified for nationals. Yes. So what's that kind of been like? Right. So uh, we knew that our rankings, we were fifth in the rankings. We knew that they wanted to take three this year. Um, last night, Stunt came out and said we're going to take the top four. And we had just moved up in the rankings last week into that fourth place spot. So we were really hopeful that it would be us. And um, we got the, the notification today that our rankings would qualify us for the national tournament. So it has been a whirlwind getting T-shirts ready and all of the stuff to plan a national trip in a, a matter of weeks, whereas before with traditional cheerleading or traditional dance, we would plan a nationals trip for an entire year because it was invitational and, you know, anybody can go. So just finding out this late in the game has just been kind of a crazy day, but super excited that we're in it and excited for the team and for the university and to represent, you know, the Beavers down in Dallas. So we're really excited. And so it's been obviously a really quick turnaround uh, for that. And like you said, it's different from cheer and dance, which you also coach right. here at BV. So what's kind of been the change going from cheer and dance coach and now I'm going to take everything that's really athletic about all of this and put it into stunt. How's that change come for you? Um, I, it's a welcome change. I really love what stunt has done for cheerleading. I think it's the way that we're going to get the most respect um, because people understand it. It's not we're not being judged on how we look out on the floor or um, you know do they like our choreography. It, it is just on our athletic abilities, and that's what I think um, in my whole coaching career. That is the most exciting for me. Um, there's still a place for traditional cheerleading and. Um, uh, this just ha happens to be my biggest passion to be in this sport. So, yeah, it's changing gears a little bit from, you know, cheering at a football game or a basketball game to now this being we are the center of, of the game. We are what we're, we're playing for. So um, it's a welcome change and, and a very happy one to be a part of. And so as we go forward, we've already talked about how strategic it is for you guys. How is kind of the game plan looking out when we go down to Dallas as a team for Nationals? I know, obviously, you just found out, so, right. but I know you've already got some game plan in there already, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I've um, been looking at the teams that uh, uh, have had games and watching and, and what, what kind of rounds that they have and what type of skills they have and planning our practice plans and what we need to achieve in the next couple weeks has been instrumental, but also looking at what does a, a, a three-team bracket look like? What is a four-team bracket? Who are we going to be playing in what rounds um, to really kind of identify our best strategy? I'll keep that close to my heart right now, but um, definitely we'll be sharing that with the team and, and what, what, what we need to work on and focus on in the upcoming weeks. I understand that completely. Last time we had an interview, we had Coach Dickinson of the football team on right away, and he's obviously not going to give away his playbook right, right. away, so <laughs> totally understand. But Coach Muskie, I very much appreciate you coming on here today. Obviously, it's inaugural season. We got to talk about stunt a little bit. Yep. People don't know. I mean, it's a new sport here at BV. Right. So again, I appreciate you coming on with me today. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here. This week in the rankings, we decided to have a little fun here at the Beaver Playbook and rank the best sports uniforms on campus. While every team has the same color scheme to choose from, they all tend to use the designs a little differently. Now, shall we get into it? Coming in at our number five spot is a great scent for, set for the winter months with the gold uniforms of women's basketball. This one finds its way above thanks to that script writing right across the chest above the men's basketball uniforms. And again, that script writing just works so well. At number four, we have a uniform that has come back into season recently with one of my personal favorites on this list, softball's pinstripe navy uniforms. 
I'm a sucker for the pinstripes. What can I say? They just work so well in baseball or softball. Right in the middle of our rankings for best uniforms on campus is one near and dear to mine and Brandon's hearts as we're both involved with the football team. Well, technically I'm not since I'm retired. But regardless, we have the all-Navy gear for BVU football. I'm not sure what it is, but it's just so simple, it works. In the runner-up spot is a jersey I don't think gets the attention it deserves, men's soccer navy striped uniforms. Most people may resort to their lake blue with the stripes, but these ones just pop a little bit more. They've, they've got the better look. That's just simple as that. And finally, in the number one spot is one many people have raved about with baseball's lake blues. They're just a classic. Look at them. You can't go wrong with lake blue, even though most people consider it baby blue, but it's a clean, solid color throughout and adds a little change up to the normal color scheme. Now, maybe you like different uniforms better than these, or you'd put these five in a different order. That's okay. This is only what Brandon and I came up with as some of our favorites. We'll be right back with one last thing right after this. Sure, it's been great having Buford around the office to help everyone out. Granted, there have been some minor issues. Like I said, he's been a great help. One day, Buddy was watching his favorite show. The show was so full of life, until it was suddenly canceled forever. Unfortunately, this will be our final episode. Buddy was heartbroken. If only there was something he could do. Wait, he and his teammates at BVTV could bring the show back. With a bit of creativity, Buddy returned his favorite show to TV for himself and everyone else to enjoy. BVTV, by beavers, for beavers. Oh, hey, Jaden. How's it going, Steven? Oh, it's going pretty good. I'm just really hungry and really want to get to Law Wise for lunch. But between all these recaps and other paperwork I have to do, I just don't know if I'm gonna have time for it. You usually get a steak burrito with everything, right? Um, yeah. Thanks. Welcome back to the Beaver Playbook for one last thing. As we've talked about spring sports getting into the thick of their seasons and fall sports preparing for their seasons next year, it's time to talk about an issue that I've started to notice at athletic events, attendance. Actually more, the lack thereof. Lately, student attendance has been down at sporting events, especially when it comes to things like softball and baseball and even basketball this past winter. We saw decreased student sections and many students choosing to sit away from each other, splitting the student section among the entirety of the gym. Why? What has happened that school spirit has gone and disappeared? Is it that people perceive that they have no time on their hands? Do people really have no time on their hands? Maybe they've given up on the sports teams due to their success not meeting people's expe expectations. Either way, we as students of this campus need to be the ones to step up to support these teams. I myself am not the greatest advocate of this. I've missed a couple of basketball games in my time as well. These athletes are the ones representing our school. We should be the ones to support them. Sure, it can be hard when seasons don't go the way we hope, but some games can be changed by the fans. Look at college football home games. Those places get louds and it puts a real factor on opposing teams. We need to do that for our teams. Football, soccer, basketball, wrestling, softball, baseball, whatever. Every sport, every game, we need more fans at our events. While it's too late for me in most cases, like I said, graduating in the spring, I still plan on attending plenty of baseball and softball home games, whether it's calling games or shooting highlights or even just going there to enjoy the game. But it's up to you, the rest of BVU's student community, to be the ones to support our athletes. For myself, Brandon Patton, the rest of the BVTV crew, and of course, all of our athletes and coaches, this has been the Beaver Playbook. We'll see you next time.